today we're going to implement a few quality of life changes. So we're going to start off by heading over to the event sheet and working on our controls. First thing we're going to add is the ability to rotate our block either clockwise or counterclockwise. So to do that I'm going to add a blank sub event to my keyboard up arrows pressed and I'm going to move my can move down into there and my block move in there as well. Then I'm going to take the block overlapping and make that a sub event of my can move. The reason why I did this is so that I can make this an or block and add a secondary key. So let's add another condition. Keyboard on key pressed and you can use whichever key you would like. I'm going to use the X key and I can basically copy and paste this whole thing remove the up arrow and change the X to the key I would like to use this time. Which I'm going to use Z. And since this is the opposite direction, I'm just going to swap those two around. Now when I test it, I can rotate counterclockwise in addition to the normal clockwise direction. Next we're going to modify space. You may have noticed that when you hit space, sometimes a new block shows up right away. Sometimes there's a little bit of a pause. And that's because there's nothing that is triggered when space is pressed other than the block moving down to the bottom. Then it takes fall delay amount of time for it to set into place and then a new block to be spawned. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a blank sub event to our spaces pressed right underneath our loop that moves our block down. That's basically going to be what happens when our block falls. So when our block's falling, anytime the next move makes it hit, we're going to kill that block so that it can't move anymore. So we're going to copy this. We're going to put that in our blank spot. So now when we hit space bar, as soon as we hit it, another lock is created. Next, we're going to implement a pause key. So under controls, let's add a new sub event. It's going to be keyboard on key pressed. And we're going to use the pause key on your keyboard. If you cannot find that, look above your arrows and then above the page up and page down is the pause break key and that will be your pause key. I'm going to make that an or block. I'm going to copy and paste my pause key. Change that to P. That way we can pause using P or the pause key. And our action is going to be system. We want to set our time scale to 1.0 minus the current time scale. So if our time scale is normal, 1 minus 1 is 0, which would be paused. If it's currently 0, 1 minus 0 would make it 1, so that would change it back to normal speed. Hit our pause button, it's going to pause. When we hit it to resume, the game will resume. So we're going to head back to layout 1, and we're going to double click, create a new sprite, and open up my box image. I'm going to create a new layer. and I'm going to call that the UI layer. And I'm going to move this to my new UI layer. Lock my other two. I'm going to name this sprite box. The speed doesn't matter for this one since there's only one image. I'm going to have three of these down on my screen one for my score, one for the amount of lines cleared, and one for my current level. At some point in the video, my recording cut off, so I'm going to show you how this part down here was created. So all three of these text labels are the same object, that is the label object. You'll see all three of them are here. They're all 20 point font. I centered all of mine. And then the location for this one is 600, 430. The location for this one is 560, 550. And the size is a little larger since the text is longer. And then the last one is 600 by 670 for those positions. All three of these boxes are the box object. Their locations are 680 by 500, 680 by 620, and 680 by 740. Then have three separate text objects. There's the score text box, which is named score. Its position is 560, 460, size 240 by 80, 
which is an even number of boxes. I just moved it up so that it's centered around this box. The alignment is center, horizontal, and vertical. The font size is 30. And the same thing for the next two, except the second one's name is lines. Its position is 560 by 580. Same thing with 30 point and center center. And then the last one is called level. Its position is 560, 700, size 240 by 80, font 30, center, center. Create three new global variables, one for score, one for level, and one for lines. We're going to go ahead and initialize those in our start of layout for whenever we have a game over screen in the future. So let's go to system, set value, level's going to be zero. I'm going to copy and paste that two more times so that my lines can be zero and so can my score. After we've set the values, then we can set the text boxes. So level, set the text to the level variable. Lines, set text, the lines variable. Score, set the text to the score variable. Now when we run it, those should all be zero. Now the only time our level will change is when our lines change, which is also when our score would change. All of those are when we remove a row. Nothing is in this first loop, so let's collapse it. First thing we need to do is keep track of how many rows we are going to clear at a time. So let's copy and paste one of our variables. Let's call this clear count. Number of lines cleared at a time. And this will be any time we have 10 rows. So let's add an action system, add to clear count one. So now let's close our row loop. We're gonna add a sub event for system, compare variable if our clear count is greater than zero. We're gonna move that right above our blank sub event. So anytime we clear at least one row, we want to add to our score. So let's do system, add to, and then our score should be two to the power of however many we cleared, minus one, times however many points you want to get per line. So what this would do is if we clear one, one minus one is zero, two to the zeroth power is one, that would give you a thousand points. If you clear two, two minus one is one, two to the first power is two, so you get 2,000 points. Then it will double every time after that. So 1,000, 2,000, 4,000, 8,000 if you clear four lines at a time. Since we changed our score, we need to copy and paste our score text box to be updated. We're going to go to System, Add to Lines. The amount we're going to add is the clear count. So however many lines we cleared, we're going to add that to our total lines cleared, which means we need to update that text box. So let's copy and paste that. Then right after that, we can do set value for our level. And our level is going to increase every time we clear 10 lines. So let's do floor, which means we will round down lines divided by 10. So once we get to 10, that'll be one. Once we get to 20, that'll be level two. Let's copy our level text box down to right underneath that. And then of course our level is going to be what determines our fall delay. So let's go to system, set value, fall delay. And we're going to set that to a number that's based on how fast we want it to scale up. So I'm going to add another global variable called fall scaling. I'm going to make it four. If you make it one, then the speed will increase fairly fast. If you make it high, like 10, it's gonna go very slow. So you can adjust this number without having to go and change each of the instances of setting the fall delay in the game. You can just change the one global at the top. So once we have our fall scaling, let's go back to fall delay. And this should be whatever our fall scaling value is divided by our level, the variable, plus our fall scaling value. 
So at level 0, that's going to be 0 plus 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1, so we will have 1 second between each movement of our blocks. As our level increases, we're dividing by a higher number. So at level 1, we have 1 plus 4 is 5. 4 divided by 5 is 0.8, so it's 0.8 seconds. This is also something we're going to want to set up here in the start of our layout. So now let's check and see if those worked. We'll see that on this first line that we added this to clear count instead of score. So let's change that. So we've added points to our score. Then we'll test that and see if everything's okay. So now we have a thousand points for clearing one line. Now if we were to clear two lines here, that should take me up to 4,000 points with four lines. And here when we clear four lines, that should give us 8,000 points and four lines. Okay, here we have nine lines, so whenever this clears, that should take me to level one, and my fall delay should decrease to 0.8, and now the blocks will fall slightly faster.